Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Super, super exciting day here at Art of the Image because I have the Nikon B700 in. With the P1000 coming soon, that 3000 millimeter zoom lens, I thought I'd better get my hands on the B700 because I still haven't tried this and I've had a lot of questions about it. So this is a little brother to the P900, but in some ways, not so much of a little brother. It is in the sense that the lens is a 60 times lens, which is a... What is the lens on that? I think it's 1220, 1240. I don't want to be steer you wrong. 14 to 40. So it's a 60 times 24 to 14 to 40 millimeter. Uh, that's a 35 millimeter equivalent lens. So 24 to 14, 40. So still nothing to sneeze at. We've got, um, you know, a 14, four, uh, 1440 millimeter lens. Let me move the box out of the way here. Um, and uh, it's pretty impressive uh, and the, the the reason I say this isn't necessarily the little brother to the P900 is this does 4k and raw which is two things that the P900 does not do the coming P1000 does but uh, this camera the B700 I bought this as or I didn't I shouldn't say I bought it this is on loan from um, from B&H this is a Nikon refurbished product so I think this was around three hundred and forty dollars something like that i'll put a link below you can check it out uh, but a fantastic little camera an ultra zoom as you can see i've already got it out of the box namely because for the same thing i did with the recent rx 100 mark 6 unboxing um we needed to plug it in because this camera you can't just pop the battery out of the box and put it in the charger you got to uh, charge it through the camera with the supplied wall plug and then they give you the usb cord which plugs into the wall plug. So that's how you charge your camera. Not a big fan. I would prefer to have a dedicated charger. However, it's handy, I guess, if you're on the road or something. I um, I don't know. I guess I, I do prefer having a charger. Negative for this and for the Sonys, but a lot of cameras are going that way. The big thing I really like about this camera is you've got a full very angle LCD. You've got controls here on the side. Let me turn this on here. I just was playing with the RX100 Mark VI. So now we're going to be playing with the... Um, this has a dedicated lens cap on here. Okay, in the sense that it doesn't have one of those ones that encloses uh, automatically like a built-in lens cap. Let me quick set it up here for you so it lets me uh, get into the camera. Okay, so the camera is on. Let's see what the telephoto end looks like on this. So that's as far as it extends. Certainly not as far as the P900, but it's a 14... 40 millimeter uh, lens in 35 millimeter equivalent terms. We say that to mean that the, the sensor in here is very small and that's not exactly what you would call this. Like this is a 258 millimeter lens, but in 35 millimeter real world terms, as far, as far as the reach you would get of an equivalent lens on a full frame camera, 1440 millimeters. So pretty, pretty long. And then if we um, close it down, this is it at the uh, at the wide end, so that's the 24 end. So 24 is not too bad. You could certainly use this as a vlogging camera if you take it and hold it like such. And, and uh, I'll be curious actually to see how the autofocus is on this because um, not one of Nikon's strong points to date is having something like a Canon Dual Pixel AF autofocus system. Um, sometimes with the smaller sensor, it doesn't matter as much though because everything's in focus. I mean, the strength of this camera is not a fast lens with the ability to isolate a subject and have shallow depth of field. The strength of this camera is this guy right here at fully extended 1440 millimeters. Also the ability to shoot 4K and it's got raw. So you can, you can process the images and eke that image quality out of there. So pretty, pretty impressive in that sense. This is a one, two thirds inch, uh, 20 megapixel BSI sensor. So a smaller sensor, you're not going to get the image quality out of here that you're going to get in the one inch sensor cameras, for instance, the Panasonic LX10 or the Sony RX100 Mark VI that I just recently did the unboxing for. Uh, but still, the ability to shoot raw and in good light, you could eke some pretty good image quality out of here. And I do like all the features. I mean, we got the very angle LCD. So I can flip around, close in. We've got the long, we've got the long lens, 4K, We've got uh, the ability to shoot raw. Let me see if I get that closed down for you. So I'm using the switch up top here, as you could see, to do that. But there's also one on the side of the lens barrel. So you can see here I can just activate it that way. If 
you want to keep your finger on the shutter and just use this one on your other hand as you're supporting it, it's right in place for, for when you're supporting a camera and shooting, you can use your thumb on here quite nicely. So ergonomics on here are quite nice. Nice build quality. It feels solid. It feels decent. Um, you got a uh, little cover on the side for your HDMI and some other ports there. You got your controls on the back along the side of the uh, flip-in LCD. We've got uh, a nice EVF right there. And we've got um, the, uh, the battery compartment. Let me turn it off here. You can see how long it takes to shut down there. And I'll show you, that's where the battery goes. We're using an EL23, I believe these are. Yep, EN EL23. And uh, that just goes in there, along with your SD card in the bottom. So it's quite a, it's still a fairly small and lightweight camera. It's not that big. It's certainly not as big as a P900 or what the P9000 is likely to be. Um, nice little camera, nice compact size. Good range, too. Um, not your best performing sensor in the sense that it's a one two thirds inch, but I will be interested to see, oh yes, and it has a pop-up flash as you just saw. I will be interested to see what kind of image quality we can get out of this because I think it might be surprising in good light. I certainly wouldn't want to be using this as my camera in bad light, in dim light because one two thirds inch. Well, you know what? Let's test it out and see what it does. What else did we get in the box? This was a refurb. So we get a, uh, um, a uh, camera strap. I think this was, this was a Nikon refurbished, so it's probably off the line and dialed in type thing as opposed to somebody using it per se, not a, probably a used camera. So we got, we got the strap, we got the battery, we got the cord, we got the wall wart plug. And then as you can see here, again, this is a smaller battery. Um, it's probably going to last fairly well for photography, but if I get shooting video, I wanted to have a second one. So this is a Watson non-OEM battery. Um, so I've got another battery to go with it. So if I'm out and about, I am not um, needing to uh, stop and charge the battery because I have a second one. And I always recommend that, especially with the cameras that take smaller batteries. Actually, for any camera, I recommend you have, I always have at least a couple spares on me so that I'm, I don't ever want to be in a situation where I want to keep shooting and I've run out of battery juice. These are pretty economical. I think they're around 20 bucks. Pretty, pretty decent value. I'll put a link below to all this. This is uh, courtesy of B&H. We're doing some reviews here for you, uh, our friends at B&H. So, if you have any questions on the B700, let me know in the comments below. If there's anything you want me to check out, let me know. I'll see if I can get it done for you. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com. Thanks.